All right, this series is going to cover the difference between HTML and CSS. We're going to look at the structure and the syntax of each of these two languages separately. We'll briefly discuss the difference between HTML and CSS to get started. Now, HTML is responsible for the structure and the content of a web page, while CSS is responsible for the style attributes and the visual components of a website. So you can kind of think of HTML as the skeleton and CSS as the skin and the makeup and the hair and whatnot. So they each play an important role in web design and we'll cover each one of these separately. First, we're gonna start out with HTML and talk about the specifics of how HTML looks and its role in web design. So HTML has a very simple syntax. This entire line here you see is what we call a tag. A tag is made up of first a tag name. In this case, the tag name is h1. h1 refers to a header tag or a heading tag rather. So a heading one tag is the largest and the main heading of a website. It's usually at the top of a website or the title of the article or something similar to that would be where a heading one tag would be used. Now tags can have attributes and values. Some tags require attributes and values and other tags, they're optional. But the attribute is before the equal sign and the value comes after the equal sign. You can see how the value is in quotation marks. You can have multiple pairs of attributes and values in one particular tag. Now this entire opening line is what we call the opening tag. So I would reference this as the opening header one tag or the opening H1 tag. And you can see that tags always have these opening angle brackets and a closing angle bracket on either side of the tag. Some people call those chevrons. I just refer to them as angle brackets. All right, the content of the tag is just simply referred to as the tag content. It's the visual aspect of the tag. Whatever is inside of the tag content is what will show up visually actually on the web page. So your users will see that. The last portion here is what we call the closing tag. So you can notice the closing tag has a forward slash be before the, the tag name. And that's the basic syntax of HTML tags. Once we get into a few code examples, we'll walk through this again slowly so you can kind of get a, a comfortable idea of how these tags work. Now, a typical tag um, is structured inside of an HTML page, as you see here. This particular tag has uh, is a UL tag. UL stands for unordered list. And basically this will create a bulleted list. And you can see that the UL tag is what we call a parent tag. Now the parent tag means that that tag opens and closes and there's children inside of that tag. So these three tags inside of it, which are LI tags, you can see there's list item one, list item two, and list item three. Those are all child tags. And a general rule of thumb when you're building HTML structure that every time you have a child tag, meaning a tag inside of a parent, you would indent that over one tab space from where the parent tag starts. And this may seem a little confusing at first, but it'll become really natural once you start coding and once you start programming your web page through HTML. It's quite a natural process. So don't get too caught up in this right now. Again, we'll look at this when we get into our code examples, but I just wanted you to be familiar with the terminology parent tag and child tag. Now you could say that list item is a child of UL or unordered list. And you could also say UL is a parent of list item. Now this particular slide has one third hierarchy. It has a header one tag that's a child of list item as well. And list item could be a parent of header one or you could even say header one is a grandchild of UL. Now, usually you don't use grandchild or grandparent. You just stick with parent and child relationships. I put in the third header one tag just so you can see that every time you have a child tag of a parent tag, you indent it over one tab on your keyboard. So this is typically how you'll see a, a web page structured. This isn't actually requisite to build a web page. You don't have to tab that over as web pages will read the source code with tabs, with spaces, without spaces, with tabs. It's really just for human readability purposes. It makes your code a lot easier to troubleshoot, to program, 
and to update. So you're, do, you're doing yourself a favor by including these tabs as you program your HTML. A lot of code editors that you write code in like Dreamweaver or TextMate or Sublime Text, a lot of these popular ones, they'll do this automatically for you as you build your code. 